Well, welcome back, and um, got a bit of a peculiar one here today. It's a Panasonic boombox, uh, clearly from the early 80s, possibly the late 70s. Very, very uh, square in appearance. And that, you might think, is that. But uh, this is quite a clever little boombox, because down below is a pop-out turntable. When it's not in use, this pushes back like a drawer and disappears inside behind a cover that drops down. All uh, very clever. Believe it or not, it does actually work. The model number is Panasonic SG-J500 and the ones that were made for the UK have an L suffix and I imagine that's simply because Everywhere else would have just had an AM, FM radio. But, of course, we, being English, had to be different. And we have long wave and medium wave <laughs> as well. Some units I've seen have what amounts to a bass boost and also a sort of surround sound button that uh, makes it sound as if the speakers are further apart than they are. They're five inch speakers, they're uh, built into it, as you can see. There's no external speaker jacks on this. It's pretty basic as they go, actually, but uh, it's got a beat switch, so it's presumably AC bias recording. You've got volume and tone, and that's your lot. And then on top are the controls for the tape deck. And we were just starting to get the, um, what they call the silver dollar flywheel mechanism coming in there. But it is quite a good quality one. And then on the back, uh, there's the battery compartment for eight D cells. Uh, mains in the usual boombox lead. There's a 13.2 volt lead as well that you can use with a car, I assume. I have got the cover for the battery box, but uh, I've left it off so you can see it's all uh, nice and clean inside. Now, also, is a little uh, storage port here for your mains cable. And remarkably, this thing does actually work. They usually die because, uh, well, this one didn't work when I had it. And what happens is the switches that do the functions get dirty. Contacts get dirty inside there and so uh, you lose one channel or both channels or it's faint or whatever and it's still a bit touchy now because presumably it hasn't been used in ages. The record player was broken and wouldn't slide back. Into the casing like it should do but uh, that has been fixed as well, along with the uh, transparent cover that drops down. Uh, yeah, don't push it shut with an LP on it. I only did it then just to demonstrate a little bit of an inch. It'll do that, but no more. The cartridge, I assume, is a ceramic cartridge. You can adjust the tracking force on this one. It's done from inside the unit, so it's very much a sort of service man's job. But at least you can do it. And that beats today's crapophones into a cocked hat, doesn't it? Well, let's see what happens. She's not feeling too temperamental. Try the cassette. <laughs>
tape deck didn't work when uh, it came my way because the belt had broken. That was all that was wrong with it. Um, that and needing a bit of lubrication. I think it probably needs a new playhead as well because it does sound a little bit muffled. Now if we go on to uh, FM if I can because I can't get anything else down here much. Sorry by Beyonce on Radio 1. 10 minute takeover at 6 o'clock tonight. <laughs> There. And now... I get all the usual FM suspects. Yeah, so can the government. <laughs> And there we go. Now, if I try photo, these buttons are still a bit crackly. I have sprayed them with service also. It's just a matter of using the old thing a bit now and uh, getting it all back in trim. The missus is absolutely made up with this thing and wants to uh, keep it in the kitchen. <laughs> Actually, it might not be such a bad idea. completely non-automatic. The only automatic thing is when you lift the arm and move it to the edge of the record it starts up. It's a belt drive deck, a little DC motor obviously because of the DC 12 volt supply and it will play LPs as you can see quite satisfactorily and also 45s. You've got uh, external microphone and headphone plug here as well. Now this tape I've got in it is an SA90, it's a metal tape. It will only record onto the ordinary ferric sort of tapes, but uh, not a bad little thing. And uh, well, for £10, quite honestly a song, isn't it? And it looks as if it might be capable of playing a good few more songs before it conks out. Unlike the ghastly reproduction things that you see nowadays. Yeah. And on that note, I will leave you. Show you how this retracts back in. And there we are. Job done. See you soon.